peace everybody I'm doing this video today dealing with the divest movement the divest black movement the divest black movement is a community of black women on Twitter and the internet in general who are encouraging each other to abandon the black community and uh, give all of their attention and resources and uh, abilities to non-black men or non-black people. You know, they say the black man has abandoned them, doesn't protect them. The black man is a failure. So therefore, they must abandon the black man. Okay. But I'm going to talk about my first uh, encounter with the divest movement. The year was 20... 06, the president of the United States was George W. Bush. And I was in college, right? And in college, I found out about MySpace.com, a social media app, you know? So I get to MySpace.com and I come across these groups. See, MySpace was actually a better platform than, than Facebook. It was more interactive, you had more freedom. But the group aspect was a lot better. So I guess in a group, this group called Playing a Race Card, it was a, like a people of color interracial group. People debate about issues. You had the uh, white supremacists, you had the black power people, you had the upper toms in there, you had the white liberals, the black women. And the black women appeared to be neutral, but neutral towards the side of the, the white liberals, right? So I noticed a dynamic in these particular groups. They all were uh, dominated and led by white liberal men and women. And these white liberal men and women found themselves dictating black culture and black history. They weren't talking about their own history. They were just trying to manipulate the narrative of black history, in particular, the black heroes. So I found myself debating the white liberals and the black women in the audience always was like the cheerleaders but they always cheerleaded towards the white liberal. So a couple of particular situations was, the white liberals say Marcus Garvey was a charlatan. Elijah Muhammad wasn't this. Uh, the W.E.B. Du Bois was the best thing since sliced bread. You know, and, and I'm researching and showing the evidence that, you know, Marcus Garvey was the greatest thing. Not, not the greatest thing, but he wasn't the charlatan that the white liberal claim he was. And if it wasn't for like an alternative perspective, if I wasn't in a group, basically, the black people in that group would have been totally misled by this white liberal. Okay, so this happened for several weeks. I'm debating these white liberals. And you got the black power people in there co-signing what, what I'm saying. You got the, the Andrew Mama sellout black women co-signing with the white liberal. Okay, this is how I found out about the diverse black movement. So, it was a lady that used to come into the group. Her name was Uppity Negro, right? She would jump in and out of the group and she saw how I was debating a white liberal. And uh, she took a liking to me. So she started talking to me privately in like uh, uh, private messages. And she showed me what she was doing. See, she was a black woman who was in a relationship with a white man, right? who lived in Indiana. And she would go into these uh, racist websites like Stormfront and she would pose as a white supremacist, infiltrate the groups, you know? And then she believed in her mind, this, this is what she told me, she believed she was trying to fight and end racism by uh, breeding with white men. She said if, if black women was to breed with white men, the children would no longer be racist because they'll no longer be white, you know? So I took her, I, you know, she didn't know how I felt about it. I was just, I kept that to myself, you know? She thought I believed what she believed, whatever. But I saw her idea as far as infiltrating the uh, white supremacist groups. So what I did, I found the interracial group because I noticed uh, on MySpace, when I searched internationally, especially in Africa, this is why I kind of I started looking sideways by Africa, right? So I'm searching African women, and a lot of them on their profiles, they'll say they want a white man. They got money, 
their family got oil, they prefer a white man. Like all throughout Africa, on their MySpaces, they talking about they want a white man. I'm like, this is weird. So, so I guess into this group, it was an interracial group for black, white men and black women. So what I did was, I posed as a white man. I found the picture on the internet and I uh, uploaded that picture and I said I was a lawyer making 70,000 a year on my profile picture. So I'm in this group talking about black people saying they apes, they this and that. I'm just dogging blacks outright. I'm just saying all the most gruesome, most racist things you could possibly imagine. And to my surprise, and this is like the, the most weird, this is like an anomaly. I'm, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure like this is normal for white people. But after I said all this filth about black people, I looked into my private messages and I had a like at least 40 black women sending me messages talking about they want to get married to me. They make such and such money. They got such and such career. They want to marry me. I'm like, why is all these black women talking about they want to marry me? And I'm in here dog disrespecting them and disrespecting their people. And then I said, okay, I didn't respond to none of them. I just got a bunch of black women in my direct messages talking about they want to get married. The first message they sent is about getting married to me. You know, I guess each one didn't know they was doing it, but imagine having to choose between 40 black women with jobs and money and careers trying to marry this one white dude who just got one picture. So what I did, I went, I turned it up a little bit. I started going in harder on the blacks in the group. And then the blacks in the group, the black women, it was black women and the white dudes. What they started telling me they, they they wasn't they wasn't really necessarily mad about my disrespect to black people. They just wanted me to prove that I was actually a white man. They say post another picture of yourself, post another picture of yourself, and I never did it. So they kind of realized that I probably wasn't that wasn't a white man, but I had evidence of how thirsty and desperate black women was. Right, so I went to the other group I was in with my regular profile, and I was sharing with them the messages. You know, and the, the evidence of how pathetic black women was and how they trying to marry this this racist white man who was me, really. You know, and then I guess one of the people in this this race car group was also a member of the other group with the black women talking about white men. So they went to MySpace, had my whole account wiped clean. They deleted me, deleted all the evidence. But, you know, this diverse black movement is not new. This was like 2006. This was four, 15 years ago. These black women was trying to accomplish this. Like, what what they don't realize, if they, if they, they it's not enough, it's not enough white men for them. Because for one, you got to compete with the white women. And you got the Asian women. You got the uh, Latino women. You got the African women. And then you got, you know, a lot of the white men is probably gay, homosexuals, or uh, impotent. You are trying to go to a commodity that is not really valuable. You know, valuable and like as robust. You will have to go to a commodity that's has that has a surplus that could accommodate you and also their own people. Like usually, we go to natural, we get natural resources sent from another country, import, export. You only get the, ex, the the surplus. You will never find a unless you're a foolish African country. You will you will be seldom uh, hard pressed to find a country that will ship to you a, a resource that they need that is scarce. Like say you got the water supply, like what's going on in uh, Ethiopia right now. Ethiopia was financed by China to build a dam on the Nile River, right? before the water gets to Egypt and Somalia. No, no, Egypt and Sudan, right? So Egypt and Sudan is telling them, we need this, we need water too. Because we all share the Nile River, but Ethiopia claims since the Nile River starts in Ethiopia, it belongs to them. They don't care nothing about Egypt and uh, Sudan getting their water. You know, they saying, we, get, we, we gonna turn this water into electricity. And when they turn the water into electricity, they have to slow the flow of water down. So when they slow the flow of water down, it's going to be less water uh, going to Egypt 
and, and Sudan, which is going to be less water for the people to survive off. So it's going. It might actually be a war about rehanding this, but usually a person gives the surplus to another group, not blacks though. You know, you got African countries that's rich in diamonds and oil and platinum and whatnot, silicone. They not even using it for themselves. They just sending it to, you know, to you other countries. But a people is also a commodity. So you send the surplus, if it's a surplus of women, like there's a surplus of black women in the black community because a lot of the black men have been destroyed politically, prison, murder, and then economically. They claim we're not economically uh, capable of sustaining the family. They don't look at the reasons behind that. They don't want to come together and say, how can we heal this and, and figure out how can we help economically uh, uplift the black man? They just say, we just going to divest and forget them. But they don't realize the black man always has the ability to elevate because we are the original people and we are like uh, pharaohs. We descendants of the pharaohs. So there ain't nothing we can't rise up from. You know, that's in our culture. Resurrection, being destroyed and being resurrected. Actually, it's necessary to be destroyed because without being destroyed, you can't resurrect. It's a, it's symbolic. It's a, the philosophy. You must lose everything and then you must gain everything. And when you regain everything, then you appreciate, you get more wisdom. It's really about wisdom and knowledge and understanding. That's what you get from uh, falling and rising. But the black women, they think the black man is done. So they're trying to go out there and look for other alternatives. And the other alternatives that they're looking for are not good, are not the options that they actually, you know, that, that will be able to su supply their needs because it's too many of them. And it's not enough so-called white men. And then you got to deal with the culture, the politics of that. See, racism the white man family probably don't want nothing to do with you. They whole culture don't want you just going to be a black sheep. But what I'm saying is I came across the, the uh, divest movement 15 years ago. And in 15 years, they're still trying to accomplish this dream of uh, ending racism by blending and marrying white men and abandoning their, they did actually, this happened in the 1970s when the U.S. government started mandating that the black women uh, get divorced and not have a marriage in order to get so-called welfare. And they did this by the millions. This will created the single mama baby daddy phenomenon that has led to absolutely nothing but destruction. But uh, yeah, that's all I wanna talk about. I came across the divest movement years ago and they, very, they was very thirsty and pathetic and desperate to get anything anything moving you know <laughs> all right